Welcome to the first video on uh, a series on the solo model. We are going to treat it mathematically. We are going to solve lots of problems because this is a topic which is often unaddressed, I think, in a lot of un undergraduate macroeconomics textbooks uh, in a way that is analytically rigorous and enables you to actually solve problems which are not just calculating steady state and calculating uh, golden ratio etc right but before we move on to the specifics of the model I think it's very very important to learn some basic mathematical backgrounds on on the dot notation on how growth rates work and also how growth decomposition works okay so first the dot notation this is very simple stuff for somebody who's uh, studied basic calculus but I think it's important nonetheless so if you have a function or a variable x which is a function of t right then obviously you can take the derivative of that function with respect to t uh, which is just how this variable is growing over time and uh, the definition of that of course is the fairly standard definition which I'm going to write here nonetheless um yeah so this is dx dt right very familiar to everybody and the way we represent it is by a dot that is the sum and substance of the dot notation so dx dt is just written as x dot this eases things a lot as you'll find out very soon but the dot notation itself is not very useful because it measures absolute growth right it just measured measures let's say for GDP if you take X as GDP it just measures the result in dollars or rupees so it's if, if your GDP grows by 10 billion dollars in a year that doesn't tell you much because you don't know on what kind of base that is growing so so for an economy whose GDP is 100 billion that's very low for a large uh, that's very high but for a large economy that's very low so obviously we go from dots to growth rates right so what is a growth rate then the growth rate of a variable x gx um, is written as x dot by x so you take the change in x and you divide it by the original value of x to get the growth rate so this is growth rates this is the growth rate of x so what do we want to learn about this this growth rate some properties of gx or x dot by x uh, uh, are things we need to know uh, in order to study the solo model so the first property is that if y equals ln x then dy dt is g of x this is going to be confusing don't worry uh, you're never actually going to apply this result directly in this sense but some other properties are there which which you're going to derive from property one so if z is equal to x y then g z equals g x plus g y right similarly if z is equal to x y y then this is g x minus g y and finally, if z is equal to x alpha, then gz equals alpha into gx. So how do you derive these answers? For that, you need to look at property 1. So suppose you have y as ln x. And both are functions of time, by the way. Let me write that explicitly. Now let's take the difference, let's differentiate this with respect to t. So you get dy dt is equal to 1 by xt into dx dt, which is just x dot by x, which is g of x. Right? Using this, you can derive these other properties very easily. So I'll just derive property 2. 3 and 4 are going to be left as an exercise for you so z is equal to x y right just take a log here right? 
ln z then is equal to ln x plus ln y. Right? Now you can use the result one directly, but that's not very intuitive, I think, algebraically. So you should just take the difference, differentiation with respect to x. So with respect to t, I'm so sorry. Differentiate with respect to two t. You get one by y. Uh, sorry, one by um, z. Z dot equals one by x x dot plus one by y y dot, which is just the result you wanted to prove at the beginning. Right? Results two, uh, three, and four can be proved by you once you use log. So this is all about. Um, the dot notation and growth rates. Um, one application of this you could try is um, if you have y of t equals a e g t, right? You find y dot y. This is an exercise which you can do. It's very simple really, but it will probably get you used to sort of dealing with logs in growth rates. Okay, moving on then. Moving on to growth decomposition, which is the second thing I want to talk about before we head into the solar model. Growth decomposition. Right? So the result here is this. So what is growth decomposition first of all? So when output in an economy grows, it can grow largely due to three reasons. One, more people are working in the economy. Population growth, right? Reason two, more capital is being employed in the economy. So in the factory, there are more machines, so you produce more. Fair enough. And the third reason is productivity growth. Right? So for the same number of machines and the same number of workers, you produce more. Probably because these workers are now better trained. You might include that in explicitly as a human capital component as well. Something you'll see later on. But in general, these workers are better able to use the machines or the machines are better able to be used by the workers and you have more output, even though workers and machines are the same. That is productivity growth. How do we express this mathematically, right? So this is a result. So let's say y, uh, of course, is a production function, which is a into f of kl. Right? Then gy is ga plus epsilon yk gk plus epsilon y l g f right this is elasticity epsilon here is elasticity of y with respect to k intuitively this is a very obvious result right because what does elasticity tell you it tells you if there is a percentage increase in capital how much does my output grow given the production function and g k itself is giving you how much capital has actually grown uh, over this period. So this, um, so when you multiply the two, you get the total growth caused by capital. Similarly for labor, and GA is just a generic sort of term. But let's prove this now. The proof is very illuminating in the sense that it once again tells you how to use logs in order to calculate growth rates. So let's take the log of the production function. Taking log gives you this, right? Remember, all these variables are functions of t. So you differentiate with respect to t. I'm writing this differentiate with respect to t, which is high school level stuff, just to make it explicitly clear what the structure of these derivatives is, because you are going to be using the chain rule here, and it might get a little messy and confusing for you. So once you do that, you get 1 by y, y dot, equals 1 by a, a dot. Now is where things get interesting. So you have f of k, l. You have f k, differentiation of f by k, and k dot. 
right? Plus FL into L dot. So you have GY as you wanted, you have GA, then you have um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, you you divide divide by k to get gk and you multiply by k so what you get is k f k y f k l into gk plus l f l by f into g l right but this is just the elasticity right because f k is d f by d k and this is k by f so if you just multiply by and divide by a you get it in terms of y and so you get the final result which is this um yeah right and so uh, in fact for the very standard production function which is this you get gy equals ga plus alpha gk plus 1 minus alpha gn and this is in fact uh, a result which is very often used um, just to ask you directly to find GA because in a given economy GK and GL are easy to calculate right you just go out and survey the capital in the economy or the labor force of the economy um, at full employment uh, and of course GDP growth is directly calculated GA can never actually be calculated right but once you know the other three things, alpha is a known, you can find a GA. And GA is referred to as total factor productivity growth. Right? This is the growth which is basically not given by anything else. And so this refers to growth in things like how a worker uses a machine or a computer or uh, maybe, maybe you know, you give workers a four-day work week because of which that that's improved their productivity. So this is productivity which cannot be explained by anything else. So we ascribe it to this mysterious factor called total factor productivity. So that's just the background of this. But um, once you know this, you're able to find that as well. Thank you. That will be that for this lecture.